And the library game there we go. Dive. Okay, good. So that seems, seems like it's coming along now. We're live. Maybe. Yes, I think we are live. Hallelujah. Cool. Welcome, everybody. We're starting a new Kickstarter today. We're very excited here at Handelabra. At the hand hallowed halls of Handelabra. The Handel... Handalalod, Handalabra halls, Handalal. At the Handaloo. Yes, alliteration is fun. So we thought we would, you know, just uh, show you us pushing the button because it's exciting, and then we can see maybe how quickly things come in um, when it happens, and I don't know, chat with some of you folks if you have any questions about the the project. Uh, so far, obviously, a number of questions will be answered once I push this cool button on the Kickstarter page. But you can sort of see, this is, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the back end of Kickstarter, but this is what it looks like. <laughs> You'll see all of this stuff in the right way in just a few moments. We've got the preview page here. Actually, I could probably turn off the preview link now. Bloop. Oh, no more preview. All right, 12 minutes. Yay, happy Kickstarter day. Thanks, Menzer. Woo! Looks like we got the whole team. Chris is back over there. I don't know if you can see her. Put your arm out and go like this. <laughs> yeah, there she is. Yay! She can't actually hear because I have to have my headphones on in order to make all of this magical TV magic, movie magic work. Um, but she's, you know, keeping track of all the things in the back. I think your uh, your browser went to a Google Doc there for a minute. so It did. Yeah, I was switching right. around back between all the various things that I have here. So I've got a blog post ready to go, and I've got the Kickstarter page ready to go, and, and other things. So I've got it very carefully orchestrated so that things I don't mind people seeing are on this monitor that can actually go out, and I don't put anything on that monitor that I don't want to go out <laughs> live. No secrets. And so far, I think that that's working. I mean, it's not really secrets. It's more like, you know, I don't think they need to see, like, the email that I'm about to send to, oh, I don't know, Board Game Geek, or, <laughs> you know, those sorts of things. But it's fun anyway. So, uh, actually, I might as well do this, since there's a, actually a de decent chance that there might be some people here who are new to the Handelabra family, because they're coming from the One Deck Dungeon side. So why don't we just go around um, and introduce ourselves. I'm Jeremy. I'm the president and uh, CEO official of Handelabra Games. Um, I do all the businessy stuff. Basically, I do everything that is not actually developing the games. <laughs> so, what, you know, books, business development, marketing, etc. I'm basically one of the only members of the team who does not regularly work on actually building the games, um, which is a bummer sometimes because I do like doing that. And I did a little bit back with Sentinels, but these days it's mostly all the other stuff. So uh, my partner is John. Tell us a little bit about yourself, John. Hello. Yeah, I've been working with Jeremy uh, since late 2009. Uh, we were working on apps and stuff for a long time, and yeah, we've been working on uh, digital board games for the last two years, and it's been pretty great. Um, I am primarily a programmer, uh, but I also am the tech lead and managing the projects. And uh, yeah, uh, it's been a lot of fun to dig into One Deck Dungeon. It's been um, a game that we just sort of, like a bunch of us here actually just enjoyed playing and uh it was really cool to be able to um get an agreement together with asmedi and chris and uh and make it happen so uh, we're excited to be able to build it indeed next member of the team uh we have jean marc what do you do jean marc hey i do stuff um <laughs> in particular uh I primarily work on the, programming-wise, I primarily work on the uh, game engines, which I describe to most people as the rules of the game and not the uh, visuals of the game. Um, yeah, because engine means one thing, <clears throat> different, different things to different people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So basically, like, what you read in the rule book and what the cards say is what should happen when you use them to play it. So, um, and uh, I, and I also um, 
compose music at Handle Opera, though I won't be composing the music for this one because this one already had a, a soundtrack from their um, physical Kickstarter. Um, so there will be some new music in the digital version, but uh, it'll be done by Beatscribe, um, who did the original one and uh, is kind of a, a neat um, retro uh, style to, to his music, sort of um, like Super Nintendo JRPG style stuff. Um, so that's kind of a, a neat addition to it. Um, yeah. Right on. All right, then we have Jennifer. Tell us what you do, Jennifer. All right, um, I do UI design. I build 3D environments. Um, I do a lot of. I'll be doing like the special, a lot of the special effects kind of things in the game. Um, and and Sentinels, I also help with some programming too. Um, and whatever else you need. <laughs> Yeah, Jennifer, we, we sort of refer to Jennifer as one of our utilities because we actually hired her as a 2D artist. That was how she sort of came into Handelabra. But I've actually known her for several years via a local meetup group, and I know that she's always been interested in sort of all aspects of making video games. And so as we worked with her, she started taking on more responsibilities. So she did a little bit of code here and then a little bit of 3D there and then some, you know, texturing and, and shading over here. And so she basically does a little bit of everything, which is super fun. Um, then we've got uh, David. So tell us a little bit about what you do, David. Uh, so I work on <clears throat> Engine full time. So dedicated programmer and mostly working on like Sentinel stuff right now, making sure all that stuff is keeping up with what we have planned for it. Yeah, and I think at this point, David is the only one who has not really done any significant work on One Deck Dungeon. Is that accurate? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, he's... So, for those of you who are Sentinels people, you know that all through the fall, we've been doing the fall of the variants with, um, you know, new new promo cards, new variant cards coming out every week. Um, that's primarily David's domain. He's programming those cards, you know, bug hunting those cards as they come in, you know, checking in the new powers, seeing what they do, getting them all set up. Uh, and so that's a lot of what he's been doing. And, spoiler alert, he's been doing a little bit of work on what we call Mini Pack 4, which is... Um, some of the new stuff, the new content that's coming uh, slowly but surely from the Greater Than Game side with the Oblivion Kickstarter. So there's one more member of the team. Come on over here and you can shout into my little microphone. And this is Krista. Come on over. So what do you do, Krista? Uh, hi. Nazis. Um, so yeah, I mostly do like uh, tracking sales and conventions and editing videos and uh, planning all of our social media stuff and uh, just some also odds and ends and yeah she's she's the other utility but more like a um non-programming utility so whereas jennifer does almost anything that can be done on the production side uh krista does almost anything that can be done on the non-production side so helping me out with any of the biz dev stuff community management um if you see a tweet from us, there's a, probably about an 80% chance it was written by Krista. So, so that's that. Uh, she's also our first line customer support. So if you ever have had an issue and like contacted support at handleover.com, uh, she probably handled your uh, incoming messages. Yeah, either answered it or sent it over to me or another developer. Exactly, exactly. All right, 10.55, so we got five more minutes. See some people are floating into the chat there. Uh, yeah, follow variants. We're glad that you've been liking it. Yeah, we knew that um, it was one of those things when we saw exactly how much content was coming with Oblivion, but more importantly, how many new promos slash variants there were going to be. We were sort of racking our brains like, how are we going to do this in a way that's reasonable um, in terms of like, are we going to just release you know, 20 variants with Oblivion when it comes out, or are we gonna do a bunch here and a bunch there? And then when we knew that there were being some slight delays on the actual shipping of Oblivion, we pitched Greater Than Games with this idea of like, what if we just did a variant every week for as long as we had them? And they were like, that's great, let's do it. And so, um, you know, they've been you know, getting us the content that we need to get not only the artwork, but you know, they're, you know Christopher does write new dialogue and, and um, biographies for all the new characters for their slightly different versions and stuff, so. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it's, been, it's been pretty good. Everyone's been engaged in the game every week and figuring stuff out. Yeah. Jean-Marc, did you try to say, were you jumping in there or something? 
Oh, I was just going to say we're halfway through the Halloween movies. That's right. Um, I was thinking it'd be kind of neat to each say something we're excited about with uh, this one deck dungeon. I know I can talk about that. <laughs> All right, why don't you dive in? All right. Yeah, so around my mid-teens, I got really into um, uh, Japanese RPG games. Um, and, uh, and so, like, like, I've always, since then, really liked those more, like, those deeper systems that RPGs have. And, um, you know, there, there's been tabletop RPGs, certainly, for longer than that. But the thing is, is that, like, those can be um, quite a lot of work to even get set up, much less maintain. And then there's sort of a subgenre of RPGs that, you know, are pretty old on computers, the uh, roguelike dungeon crawlers. And, um, and I, I, I never really got into those, um, mostly because I like the RPGs with like stories and stuff like that. But then when One Deck Dungeon came out, I kind of saw like how it took all those mechanics, but made it uh, tabletop friendly. And like the idea of playing with a, like playing with a friend with that, because it's a cooperative game, like it kind of added this element of like, story with your friends going into a dungeon but like with a lot less of the overhead of a tabletop RPG and so like um, I've been playing it with my wife who basically doesn't play any RPGs but she can get really into it but I feel like it's kind of a neat system because at the beginning it's pretty easy and um, a lot more you know luck dependent so you kind of like pick pick easier things to begin with but as you go through and you collect, you get more skills and items and things like that, it becomes a lot more um, strategy based. Um, like the game becomes harder, but you have more control over what you're doing. And it, I just find that balance um, really well done and like it's easy to get into, but then like becomes a little bit more involved the further you get into it. And then it has like a campaign mode to like, feel like there's something some progression between uh, sessions and things like that I just yeah it just it feels like it has all the the cool stuff from RPGs but like makes it super simple to get started right on all right I'm gonna jump in now because it is we're ticking down the seconds I'm hovering over this green launch <laughs> project now button and so I think I'm just gonna push it and let's see what happens my phone will probably buzz and say Congratulations, your project is live. All right, so here's the actual URL, which I'll put in the chat for everybody so they can start spreading around. But you can always go to onedeckdigital.com as well. And yeah, let's Is that close redirect that. happening yet? Yeah, the redirect isn't happening yet, but it will be in about 10 seconds. I already have hover open and ready to go. So one deck digital. Yeah, so this is the Alan fun part. Launched one deck dungeon. I'm getting emails from Kickstarter. All right, save forward. Uh, well, while you're doing all that stuff, we can talk about the thing that John Mark said. Um, Indeed. So for me, uh, I actually have played uh, a lot of NetHack in my life, um, and I really enjoyed it. I have ascended once. It is a really hard game, and it doesn't get easier playing it more times. I mean, it does a little. You get get used to how it works and everything, but like, just like One Deck Dungeon, you start when you start a new game, you're starting from scratch. Like that's kind of the the, the appeal of it that you start from scratch and you have to build your character up uh, in a whole new way each time. Uh, and so that definitely has a big appeal to me. And uh, and I played it a bunch on the tabletop. One of the things I'm looking forward to most about the digital version is I won't get any rules wrong. Mm. It's a similar feel for Sentinels of Multiverse. Like, when you're playing with Sentinels on the tabletop, it's pretty common that you'll miss an effect or whatever, um, and digital versions is like that. And, uh, yeah, it'll probably, usually with one deck dungeon, I find I make mistakes that make it easier, and so it'll be interesting to see how that changes. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like uh, an example uh, is uh, the shield of armor boxes. Uh, I was talking with Jeremy about doing the demo for the game, and I was like, make sure to put the dice in the armor boxes first. And he's like, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's an important thing uh, that makes the game a lot easier if you don't hold that role. Uh, yeah, Jennifer. Chat about Monday Dungeon stuff at all? It's a fun game, and I'm excited to work on it. Um, I'm also excited to show people some of the stuff we've been working on. Yeah, I wonder if people are off watching the video now. That's oh, true. Probably. Two hundred and four dollars. Like, play the video on the stream or something. Ooh, that's a good idea. Uh, I could do that, but I'm doing other things. Right Okay, once you hear other things, then we can play in the video on the stream. Yes. <laughs> like, people might be, you know, watching it on their TVs. I don't know. Congratulations, Sea Summoner, backer number two. Woo! Who's backer number one? We're already at 354. Nice. Uh, I will say congrats to backer number one, Nick. Yay. And back to the Sonbar. And uh, Chris Seslick. Who's that guy? Very slightly slower on the draw. Back to number four. <laughs> Sorry that I'm getting quiet. As I mentioned to, the, to everyone on the stream, I was like, okay, once we go live, I've got like 50 things I gotta do. So, I'm trying to get Where all of our. Where do we the backers? Uh, if you're a collaborator, you can go into the back end for the Kickstarter, and there's a backer report. Oh, okay. I think you're set up as a collaborator. Yeah. I just wasn't sure where to go, because this is the first time I've been set up. Yeah. 2% <clears throat> <funded>. <laughs> Woo! We're almost there. <laughs> One deck digital should. Hey, it works. All right. So now that that is good to go, the email should be set, and I can make our blog post live. Yeah, it's funny. Like you would think that this wouldn't be a thing, but because of the way Kickstarter works, you don't have a link until you actually go live. Um, yeah, that's pretty weird. I feel like that shouldn't. That should not be the case. Like, that should be a thing that, like, you can pre-build the link and then pre-populate. I mean, obviously, the, the easiest solution to that is ha setting up a, your own URL, like ours, OneDeckDigital.com. But then you still, even if you've set everything up beforehand, you still need to, like, go to one place and reset wherever that's supposed to go. Um, and, of course, we actually have several places to set up because there were just so many things. Only so many things I could actually accomplish to get this all situated. So, all right, let's get our blog post live. This is exciting! Over $500 already! Yeah, so we've actually only ever done one Kickstarter before, and it was not really for a new project of ours. It was basically for, you know, it was for Season 2 of Sentinel. So it was a, an extension of something that we already knew had a pretty solid existing fan base on the digital side. You know, with, with One Deck Dungeon, we know, obviously, that it's done amazingly well on Kickstarter. You know, the first Kickstarter raised like 160000 The Kickstarter for Force of Shadows earlier this year raised like two hundred and seventy. I want to say. So we know that there's people out there who love One Deck Dungeon. The question is... Um, are they A, interested in One Deck Dungeon Digital, and B, have we done our job in telling them about it? <laughs> so we'll have more to do over the coming weeks and month, and month, I guess I should say. So for those who don't know, the, the campaign uh, runs through December 1st. Uh, we will be, obviously, uh, talking a lot about One Deck Dungeon at PAX Unplugged in just two short weeks. Um, so if you are going to be at, yeah, ODDD is a weird acronym, that is true. <laughs> It can be, it's the same acronym if you use One Deck Digital. That's true. It's Wait. odd, even. Oh, <laughs> our website has minus one days, minus one hours, minus one minutes, and 38 seconds. Oh, if you go to that page, it should be redirecting at this point. Yeah, I know, but it was the tab was still open. 
Oh, oh. <laughs> so the, the timer just did, did some yeah. terrible thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now it redirects over. Actually, I reloaded the page and it doesn't. No, nope, no, nope. you're right. The, I, I think I only set the one redirect. I gotta set the other one. Hang on. 660. Minus, minus three seconds. New comment. The first comment on the Kickstarter from Elder. Oh, wait, no, I have to do this from a different place. Elder says, as Maddie just keeps getting better and better, bring on the digital version. Amen to that. See, Summoner asks if they add ons for the physical game. Uh, there's no physical rewards in this project, so we don't, we don't want to have to deal with shipping and things. <coughs> yeah, mixing, mixing physical rewards into a digital Kickstarter has, in many accounts, I've seen in red been not always the best idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you can go to uh, onedeckdungeon.com and uh, buy the game or pre-order Force of Shadows. So. Mm. Salty Horse asks, I forgot to try Sentinels during the free stream weekend. Are you planning another one in the future? Uh, no specific plans, but uh, it could happen again. But uh, there's also a free demo I'll go learn to play edition if you try. That's true. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll probably plan on having a demo for One Deck Dungeon too. Maybe. I don't know. We haven't decided yet. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not make making any That's... promises. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I wonder why so my the one redirect works, but the other redirect does not work. Why is that? Correctly. Evil Dice Monkey asks, no iPhone, Android, etc. versions at the start. Care to mention why? Uh, I could read the FAQ entry that Jeremy has written. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the short answer is that it's very hard to, well, maybe not hard, maybe hard is the wrong word. Um, it is not made easy by the platforms to deliver those sorts of things. Um, yeah. yeah, why don't you just read it, John? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, well, yeah, that, I mean, that's basically it. Like, uh, fulfilling mobile stuff is not feasible for us, basically. Um, on Google, there are promo codes, and we use that for uh, Sentinels uh, and so on. Uh, and But on iOS, there is no sanctioned way to do it. You can try to get around the rules and... You can do things that are against Apple's rules and risk being kicked off the App Store. Uh, we don't feel, we've seen other companies do that. Maybe it works for them if they're lucky. We don't think it's worth the risk. Yeah. And uh, we don't think it's, yeah, so we'd rather uh, avoid that risk because, you know, if we get kicked off the App Store, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. Or, and then that would result in you not being able to get the game that you paid for as well as basically shooting your company in the foot. So, uh, and Steam, on the other hand, makes it super easy and Valve is 100% on board with generating keys and all that stuff, so uh, it just works so much better that way. Um, you know, there's also more development effort uh, to bring it to mobile and we feel like with this game, since it's a roguelike game, uh, it fits really well on PC as a launch platform. So even without Kickstarter, we probably would launch first on Steam. Yeah, I agree with that. So, uh, but yeah, it is something we want to do. Uh, there's going to be a stretch goal to bring it to tablets, and it's something we want to do in the future regardless. But uh, you know, that's not the focus right now. So if you want the game to happen, though, uh, you get it for Steam, and then you can also get it for mobile later. And we will add that stuff to the FAQ because it will be an FAQ. Yes, I concur. A good old FAQ. Yeah, and that's mainly speaking to tablet. Um, 
bone would be similar. Like if you look at what we had to do for Sentinels uh, or to bring it to bones, it would be a similar kind of thing. When a dungeon where we would need to build uh, uh, a UI that works well on bone, um, which would be a significant project. Mm. Not impossible, but uh, notable. Uh, Infestus has a question for Jean Marc. Will Jean Marc contribute music or only Beats Guy? Um. Yeah, I, I'll be doing mostly like feedback um, and very, very general direction, but it'll mostly be Beat Scribe on this one because sort of, you know, like he's definitely the one deck dungeon composer. Um, and we all, you know, we all felt, I and mean, I felt right from the beginning that he was the one most um, qualified to add any additional music we needed. Um, we had a meeting and, you know, I think we're on the same page with a lot of things. Um, we definitely are looking into the idea of making the music uh, interactive um, in the game and I'll, I'll be involved with that. Um, and might be involved with the sound design that is like the sound effects and how they integrate with the music um, a little bit more than I have been in the past because um, composing music takes a lot of time so I haven't had as much of a chance to um, focus on that uh, as I might for this one. But uh, yeah, his, his music's really good and I've heard some of his work in progress for the Forest of Shadows expansion and in my opinion even better. I really like the books. So, um, so yeah, I look forward to having those uh, mixed into the game as, as a part of the experience as opposed to like an optional thing which um, people may or may not you know, here when they're playing the physical game. Cool, cool. Uh, Leo asks, and I'm echoing a lot, uh, who from Hand Elaborate is going to PAX Unplugged? So yeah, that is going to be uh, myself, that's Jeremy, Krista, and Jennifer are going to be at PAX Unplugged. Oh no, what happened to the thing while I was trying to save this? Oh no. Um, yeah, so at least that's the plan right now. Jennifer, you're still, you're confirmed for that, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. going, I'll be there. That's what I thought, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so the three of us will be there. Um, uh, we are in booth 139, I believe. So yeah, come see us. Uh, we will be obviously showing off our existing games, but also talking all about uh, One Deck Dungeon. And actually, I should also mention um, that uh, Forest of Shadows, the plan right now for the, is for physical Forest of Shadows to be available for sale at that show. Um, and we may be selling some of it from, um, from our booth. Um, so, yeah, if, if regular physical... And we've cracked $1,000! Woo! Nice. Um, yay! Yay! Um, yeah, so if, if physical... Yeah, 5%. Physical One Deck Dungeon is your thing. Um, come check us out because uh, we sh we're hoping to have it. That's a fingers crossed. Uh, that's you know it's on a it's on a boat, or maybe it's almost done being on a boat. But Chris, I know from Asmati, is definitely planning on having it there. So and he should be bouncing around our booth a little bit as well. All right. Apparently, I had a misunderstanding about how I could change this particular redirect. So there's at least a button on that page now to go where you need to go. I'm trying to add a meta redirect to the page, but I can't get into the head, so... Wow, that's really meta. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cancel that. Oh, do... I... Ashram has a good acronym. D-O-D-D -D -D dot. Ah! Yeah, that works a little better. Digital One Deck Dungeon. Or maybe it's Deck... One digital dungeon. Oh, as Mighty Games posted, uh, they won't have the plastic versions, but they're hoping to have the normal version. Aha! There you go. Straight from the Asmati Games mouth. And the silicon version will also not be ready. But we'll be running Kickstarter and showing off some video at least. Is John allowed to wear another company's superhero t shirt? 
guess I'm allowed to wear whatever I want. You, yeah, but you got to take a the... sharpie and write Schmulverine on it. <laughs> That's the rule. I like this T-shirt. We're not allowed to put that character in Sentinels. <laughs> not that we would, but dot dot it is. Time to redo the whole Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> We're canceling the Kickstarter and renaming. <laughs> question about how the music will be interactive um we're still discussing that um i think at the very least we'll have a distinction though so there's three different um main uh situations you can be in you can be either be in the hallway sort of exploring like looking through the doors and deciding where you're going to go next um you can be in an encounter or you can be in a boss fight which is like an enhanced encounter um so we're going to have like uh, a different feel for each one of those um, you know as you move in and out of the hallway into different encounters it'll, the music will change to give it um, a different feel of where you are um, even if you know you weren't looking at the screen um, and, uh, and the boss fight will sort of be like its own situation by the way, I completely uh, forgot to show when we were doing our preamble here that, uh, and you can see this if you look in the Kickstarter, but you can actually see that, you know, the game is, you know, this is our sort of pre, pre, pre-alpha version of it here. It doesn't have the music in like Jean-Marc was talking about, but I had meant to sort of run through an encounter real quick so people can see how it works. Sure, yeah, that would be helpful for yeah, so first, you know, you, you after you've picked your heroes and that's all set up, you come in here and you explore, and that's where you sh I showed with the um, uh, the torch there. You pick up a, a door to go in. Looks like we're going up against a blob here. A glooping ooze, as it were. We roll the dice. Actually, I don't know if you guys are hearing the sound. I might not have been capturing the sound properly, but... Uh, either way, you can see how things move here. And then the sort of key game loop here is that you use your various dice to sort of cover up these boxes and either take down a shield or, you know, knock them over or whatever. So, you can see I got two fives and two sixes here, uh, but those are yellow. I've got to cover these, these uh, ones with the shields first, and those are blue. So, I can do the three... And then I have a heroic die here, which I can use to cover anything, and I can cover the two with that. Now I can proceed to go over to these. This was what, what John was talking about earlier. And actually, I'm going to go right through this with the exception of that five. So that's going to burn some extra time. I will end the encounter. I lose some time there. And now I get to pick my loot. And this is one of the cool things about the way that the one deck of one deck dungeon works is that at the, that same card that was a door then it became the encounter and then when it's done it becomes the loot and you have three choices of loot you can either get an item which will add another die for you to use or more health or something along those lines you've got um, XP that you can use to level up your character or you can add another skill in this case here we've got armor crush place um, place a six in an armor box I'm gonna take the XP Boom. so that's a, that's the sort of the basic gameplay loop of how that works um, and uh, we'll see more as the campaign goes on. Uh, one of the other things we didn't mention yet uh, here, which you probably should know since we're obviously streaming now, is that we are going to be doing quite a bit of streaming throughout the campaign. Every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, um, we're going to be doing live streams while we'll be doing dev stuff. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing, John? Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> if you followed us during the Sentinels... Uh, Season 2 Kickstarter, and just in general after we did some de development streams. And uh, and so we're going to be doing that with One Deck Dungeon as well. Um, the first one is going to be next week where uh, we'll have Jean-Marc uh, doing some programming. Uh, so if you're interested in C Sharp, if you're interested in board game rules or any sort of you know programming stuff, uh, that'll be real good um, uh, content to check out. Uh, I'm sure at that point, John Mark will probably be programming some specific encounters or heroes or something like that. Um, as an, you can, I'm sure you'll be able to go over some more of the uh, overall way things are set up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and so that's going to be next week. Uh, and the week after that, we'll be digging more into how we're building the user interface. Uh, we did, uh, and it's going to be to some extent similar to how we uh, showed some stuff with Bottom of the Nine. Um, in terms of how we integrate in with the rules, but then we'll also show 
some of the you know some of the way we're doing animations and stuff is different in one deck dungeon and uh we might go into some of that and that'll probably be me and jennifer um doing that stream uh and then we yeah we haven't uh 100 decided what the, the rest of the streams will be uh we might uh potentially be able to get uh a music stream uh if we can uh coordinate that um and you know potentially other programming stuff uh and who knows so there's always lots of stuff behind the scenes that you don't get to see about game development that we're happy to show so yeah and we found that people really yeah. like it so you know it's, it's less about what we want to show and more about the fact that you know the one or two times we tried it people are like hey can we see more of that and it's like hey you want to i mean it's work we're going to do either way <laughs> so if you know putting it up for a stream and letting people sort of see behind the curtain it really honestly doesn't take a lot of extra time for us. If it did, that would be a different story. But basically just sort of letting, having somebody sort of free associate while they're working and tell, sort of explain their thought process, um, you know, if that can be helpful to some, I think that would be, I think that's great. So. Yeah. Uh, see, Summoner asks, is two hero mode for one deck dungeon digital going to be solitaire only, or are you planning to include an online multiplayer mode? Uh, for the initial version, uh, it's going to be local only, so you can play two heroes by yourself, or you can have a friend with you. Um, we're not uh, including online multiplayer with the first version uh, for various reasons. Uh, it's a lot of work to build multiplayer, and uh, you know we want to make sure we do it right, and we want to, you know, it's just not in scope for the initial project, uh, but it's something we do uh, want to consider for the future. Uh, you'll also be able to, similar, since it's a co-op game with no hidden information, uh, you'll be able to like, you know, screen share over Skype uh, to play the game uh, with friends too. So but just like with Sentinels uh, in the early days, um, that's how we did Sentinels Live for, I don't know, a year, almost a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so that's certainly, uh, certainly doable. And, uh, but yeah, uh, we're not ruling out multiplayer for the future, but it's uh, it's just not going to be in scope for the first period. Yeah, and I think some of that too can also be discussed from the marketing side, which is that, you know, we have actually a pretty decent amount of uh, learned knowledge from Sentinels of the Multiverse in terms of how many people actually play multiplayer, uh, as well as industry trends that we've studied and, and other things like that. And so we know that, like, we could delay the launch of the game for an extra couple of months in order to get multiplayer done but something like 80 percent of people aren't ever going to use that mode so it makes more sense even if we are absolutely going to do it it makes more sense to get the single player game launched and get it out there and then add that after the fact so that people can um you know start playing and enjoying the game as soon as possible so. mm -hmm. all right okay so um We've crossed fifteen hundred dollars. That's awesome. Uh, we've been doing this for almost a half an hour now, but I think that that's going to do it for our cool little launch stream here. Like I did say, we have we're going to be doing this every Wednesday. Not like this. Uh, the ones on future Wednesdays are going to be more informative and less sort of Jeremy trying to click all the things while other people <laughs> talk about stuff. Uh, but we hope that you'll join us. If you're, you know, a longtime Handelabra fan, thank you for sticking with us and checking out our next game. If you're brand new to the Handelabra family because uh, you're coming from either One Deck Dungeon or something else, welcome. We, we're happy to have you. Uh, we're very excited to bring this game to digital and um, and yeah, just help us spread the word. And thanks for thanks for everything. Yep, spread the word on all the social medias on Reddit. I'll post a link to a Reddit post here if you want to, you know give it a thumbs up that would be great uh chris posted that and uh, we'll be active in there answering questions as well um so yeah share it, spread the word and we'll make this happen and get into stretch goals indeed all righty thanks everybody we'll see you in the dungeon bye bye bye, bye.